Breaking right now, dozens now dead after a hospital fire in Iraq. The information just coming into our newsroom. And a car following right behind, stop the stop sign, and then the gentleman gets out and uh, proceeds to attack her. A man now behind bars accused of attempted sexual assault over the weekend. A neighbor of the victim catches the image of the suspect. Plus, the reason Burger King employees going viral this morning, the uh, picture getting a lot of attention. You see it right there. Live from Fox 39 and your home team, Eyewitness News in the Morning starts now. All right, well, we're talking McDonald's right now. They're calling July 13th, <laughs> yes. World Famous Fan Day. Okay. That's a good day. So giving one ultimate fan, they call it, uh, the chance to win free French fries for life. That is Amazing. Yeah, so the chain is launching a new rewards program. Everyone who downloads the McDonald's app gets a free medium fry. 66 fans actually going to win 1 million rewards points. One lucky winner out of that, then we'll score a free fry. Seems okay, like so a lot of hoops to get through. But, but everyone gets free fries. Everyone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> great. Cool, Good cool. to know. Uh, you can enter at mymcdonaldsfancontest.com. To, to get the free fries today, though, do you have to be on the app? Yes, I, think, I think that's And yes. you're an app? You're an app? I am an app user. User. <laughs> I was you, like, what's it? Are you I, I don't have the You're uh, so McDonald's healthy. Day. Oh, that's not true. Yes, yes <laughs> you're so healthy. I, I'm like, I'm either pretty healthy or like the other extreme. Like you, just yes, yeah. that's true. Because I've been with you on the weekends. <laughs> okay. <and> okay. <laughs> everything goes out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so weekend, you know. Uh, but you were telling us a little uh, inside scoop here that you can actually order French fries. That's right. Well done. Well done. A little yeah. extra mm. crispy. Um, I don't know if it kind of annoys the workers or not, well, but was, you guys were saying it holds up the line. I mean, it takes less than 30 seconds. Uh -oh. Just but are they, are they making crispy. the own batch for you? Because I feel like it's just a big old batch Every, of I think everyone like. I mean, I'm okay. not talking like burnt. There's a little <laughs> brown on the edges. It's a little extra crisp And I think there. that I'm doing everyone else a favor. Okay, well, let's try it mm -hmm. out. We'll yeah. go in. We'll see if they'll do it for us. We actually uh, have an amazing McDonald's right by our, st our station, rather. Uh, and every time I go there, she tells me to have a make awesome day. Oh, so, how cute. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that's over in Winnebago. I was going to say, our uh, floor director, Cole, says they do get annoyed. Okay. Uh-oh. Yes. Inside Sorry. scoop there. All right, Joey, though, uh, we're, <laughs> we're maybe a little bit annoyed by the, the kind of the gloomy start to our day. Yes. Hoping it'll clear up, though, for uh, Whitney later on for her birthday. Yeah, we're waking up to a little fog, little cloud cover this morning, but there'll be some sunshine in the works for the afternoon. Taking a look outside, you can see that we do have uh, that fog over downtown Rockford, especially down towards Interstate 88 is where the thickest fog is this morning. Uh, so you definitely want to take a little extra caution if if you're traveling out there uh, for the morning commute. Now, temperature wise, we're sitting in the 60s. Dew points also in the 60s. So that means there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, especially near the surface. And that is contributing to some dense fog this morning. Uh, 0.8 in Sterling, one in DeKalb, two mile visibility in Rochelle, and three in Freeport. Just take extra caution and also travel with your low beams this morning. Uh, we have temperatures closing in on the 70 degree mark in Rockford, low to mid 60s elsewhere. Uh, still a couple of showers, especially east and southeast of uh, Interstate 39 and also Interstate uh, 90 as we get into today, especially going into mid morning. That fog going to continue. Showers also uh, are going to continue until about mid morning. Then we'll see gradual clearing for the late day drive. So a much better uh, drive home uh, later on today. Let's take a look at our first warning interactive radar sponsored by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Uh, so far we've had some patchy fog this morning that will let up to some sunshine. I'll let you know more about that plus the thunderstorm chances that lie ahead. Back to you. Now, breaking news this morning. Dozens of people now dead in Iraq. It's after a fire swept through the COVID-19 ward of a hospital. 64 people now dead in Iraq after that fire swept through the COVID-19 ward. Uh, the fire breaking overnight at the hospital. All of those who died suffering severe burns, 100 people also injured. The new ward opened just three months ago. No word yet on what exactly started it. Meanwhile, here at home this morning, p police now investigating a deadly shooting happened at a Rockford pharmacy. This was around 8.30 last night outside the Walgreens on 11th Street. Police say one man was shot, taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. He did die a short time later. We're told the coroner's office will release more details soon, so we'll bring you those, of course, as they come in. Well, this marks the second deadly shooting in just 24 hours. We told you about another one around 1.30 Monday morning. 29-year-old man found dead on a sidewalk. Uh, he died at the hospital and still no word yet 
on his uh, on the suspect information rather. Well, a man is behind bars this morning accused of trying to sexually assault a woman. This happened Friday night on 22nd Street. Investigators say 55-year-old Kenneth Dandridge attempted to assault an elderly woman. Dandridge is charged with aggravated criminal sexual assault, aggravated battery, also criminal trespassing. He's now being held at the Winnebago County Jail. Well, a neighbor in that same neighborhood uh, getting the alleged attacker on camera. Rachel Perry spoke with that resident whose security cameras captured all of it. She tells her what really disturbed him. And a car following right behind, stop at the stop sign, and then the gentleman gets out and uh, proceeds to attack her. Kelvin Milner was coming home from work when he says he saw six police cars outside his neighbor's house. Rockford police say a woman was attacked in her garage on 22nd Street in Rolling Green. Milner's home surveillance camera caught the man just moments before. Watched the video up until the point where um, I got that clear shot of his face. The woman didn't want the entire video shared. It shows a man walking across a lawn, and the next thing you hear is a woman screaming. I didn't watch it all the way through. I, uh, the cops were watching it, and I heard her screaming, and I, I didn't. I decided I didn't want to watch it. Eighth Ward Alderman Karen Hoffman tells me what happened to this woman and the neighborhood disturbs her. My own daughter uh, lives in the neighborhood, and her street was shot up twice. So it's personal. She spoke with the Rockford Police Department on safety advice for the public. The police have also strongly suggested that everyone be aware at all times of their surroundings and any persons in their vicinity, especially be aware when exiting your vehicle. Hoffman says home security devices are highly recommended and Milner agrees. That everyone get a home security system, including outside cameras and a doorbell camera. That we have cameras, we're getting more put up, some facing towards our neighbor's house now. Um, and I mean, we have an alarm system we make sure we set every single night. Meanwhile, over in Denver this morning, police say there was no threat of a mass shooting when four people were arrested with guns and ammo in their hotel room. All four people appeared in court yesterday, one of them saying he was actually there to sell drugs. A housekeeper discovered the guns and told police because that hotel is near Coors Field, the site of this week's base baseball all-star game, police seized 16 long guns, more than 1,000 rounds of ammo, meth, and body armor. Well, over in Janesville, after more than 20 years of work, some state line animals will soon have a new place to get some much needed help. The Humane Society of Southern Wisconsin breaking ground on its new facility. This was Monday. It's located on Highway G uh, between Beloit and Janesville. That group uh, brought in the four, or bought rather, the 44 acre property. It's all thanks to a donor. That site will include better medical capabilities like indoor surgical suites. Currently, procedures are actually performed in a truck outside. It really isn't so much a want, it truly is a necessity. Uh, we've been in our current location for a very long time. Uh, in all truthfulness, we're not in a great state of uh, uh, condition. Uh, for example, we have current uh, indoor kennels that we do not use because if it rains, uh, the, the animals get wet. Well, that should be up and running by March of next year. Well, time now is 7.08. A local student thinking outside the box to design a traffic sign. He has a message for drivers. Slow down, and it's really saving lives. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to take a couple of extra minutes this morning, especially with the fog out there. We'll have more details on that, plus the severe threat that moves in tomorrow. Coming up in the forecast, stay tuned. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Whitney Martin. Elliot Grandia and meteorologist Joey Molino.
Now, your first warm weather forecast with meteorologist Joey Marino. Good morning, everybody. We had a couple of showers track in overnight last night, and that pushed our daily total yesterday for rainfall up to 0.41 inches of rain. And that's the highest so far this month of July, but still we're just almost about a three quarters of an inch below average. We're going to see more rainfall over the next couple of days as thunderstorm chances increase thanks to a rise in heat and humidity. But out there this morning, still dealing with a few light showers, also patchy dense fog as we take a live look over downtown Rockford. Not as dense as in other spots this morning. In fact, uh, the thickest fog has been sitting along Interstate 88. You can see one mile visibility in DeKalb, too in Rochelle and 1.3 in Sterling. So if you're traveling out there this morning, just make sure to give yourself a couple of extra minutes and travel with your low beams on as you travel through uh, dense fog. Temperatures this morning, similar to yesterday, sitting in the 60s, much of us in the mid to upper 60s, 65 in Rochelle, 66 in Monroe, 67 in uh, Galena, right now 68 here in Rockford. Now we have a slow moving low pressure system that's making its way to the east of the area that did bring in a couple of showers overnight last night, but much of the activity now uh, moving off towards our east. This low pressure system is actually going to be making its way out of here, uh, tracking northeast into the Great Lakes, and that's why we're going to start to see conditions dry out for the rest of our Tuesday. So we're going to see some sunshine later on today. That should help temperatures get into the low 80s. Then winds will change to the southwest by tomorrow, so that's going to help temperatures get close to that 90 degree mark. 88 for a high. We'll have a chance for afternoon and evening thunderstorms. That chance continues into Thursday, thanks to to a cold front that's going to be moving in. Now let's take a look at today's chances. We're going to see those chances end around mid to late morning, allowing us to see cloud cover decrease uh, during the afternoon. So we'll see some sunshine. Temperatures are going to be in the low 80s this afternoon. We'll stay quiet for food truck Tuesday. Then once we get into tonight, we'll have mostly clear skies. Now tomorrow, starting off with some sunshine, but there'll be clouds quickly increasing. And then you can see thunderstorm chances really ramp up as we head into the afternoon and evening. Now looking at the severe threat for tomorrow, you can see the Storm Prediction Center put an enhanced risk for severe weather. Level three of five in the categories for severe weather for portions of northern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, and then extending into much of central Wisconsin. In these areas under the enhanced risk, there will be the threat for damaging winds, large hail, and a couple of tornadoes. You can see the threat not as high here in the state line. Half the state line in a marginal risk, the other half in a slight risk, but I think damaging winds and heavy rainfall are going to be the top threats as we get into Wednesday. Thursday, the threat shifts to our southeast. You can see a marginal risk for our southeastern areas, so damaging winds with any thunderstorms along along that cold front. Now that cold front going to bring big changes as we head into the weekend, dropping from the 80s into the 70s by Friday and then low 80s over the weekend. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Joy. Rockford City Council recognizing the winner of a traffic sign competition. Yeah, Alexis Carpello catching up with that junior from Auburn High School who says he worked for hours on this project hoping that a sign can save lives. Just to slow down and, you know, watch where you're driving. You know, there's uh, people die every day from people speeding and not paying attention. That's the message Anthony Orende, a junior at Auburn High School, hopes comes across to drivers. Winning, which I was just trying to do something that could stand out easily that isn't like a odd, I feel like ugly color. It was like a, it was a red that could stand out with the contrast in the red and white. And then my graphic design teacher, including the heart, just to kind of as something else just to put in there to really tie it all together. His design was one of dozens submitted to the traffic calming sign competition. This first sign was the one that I, I spent the most time on and ended up winning. He worked on perfecting the details in his graphic design class. Rockford's traffic engineer says it was the quick, catchy design that caught his attention. What I really liked about his is uh, I'm the traffic engineer, so I want things that can clearly convey a message. Carter says the idea for the competition came after picking up phone call after phone call from residents worried about cars speeding down residential roads. You know, rather than just telling people, well, there's nothing we can do, this idea was kind of born that the, a grassroots effort, people can put the signs in their yard and remind people they're in the neighborhood that there's a chance of kids being there or people walking or just generally pedestrians or people on bikes and they need to remember they're not traveling the interstate. Oren Day's winning sign got him some cool Rockford merch, recognition at Monday City Council, and a challenger token from the city. Well, it's just uh, out of the ordinary, you know, something you just don't expect for you to happen. We can actually pick up these signs next week at Rockford City Hall. All time now is 716 this morning. Debate in our state capitol. 
on who should wear masks when school resumes come this fall. The reason some lawmakers, though, say there shouldn't be any mask mandates. Plus, shark sightings are on the rise this year. The reason, though, some people aren't too concerned about it. The number of shark attacks around the world actually dipped for the third year in a row back in 2020. Yeah, but so far experts now say shark sightings here in the U.S. is up in 2021. Everybody freaks out, yeah. Why? Well, because it's a shark. Summer is in full swing, but as folks along the east and west coasts are flocking to the beaches, experts are reporting an increase in the number of shark sightings. We know that there are quite a few juvenile white sharks that we've seen, many of which that we've tagged. Off the shores of Southern California, scientists are using special tracking devices to monitor the activity of these predatory fish. They say so far they've noticed a larger concentration of younger great white sharks swimming closer to the shore, with at least six spotted Saturday alone. We see juveniles here every, every year starting late spring, early summer. We think that is mostly due to either abundance of food, water temperature, or safety, or a mixture of all three or two. Meanwhile, further north near San Francisco, a surfer was bitten the leg by a great white roughly two weeks ago. It was only one bite. Uh, there were about 10 lacerations to the back of the right thigh. A shark can attack, uh, you know, very close to the beach. But in an effort to help keep people safe, researchers say it's important to keep people educated. And that yeah. one's a tiny yeah. shark, yeah. Members of California State University's Shark Lab are taking their pop-up tent on tour to local beaches, dispelling shark myths. Educating the young and teaching them about it, and safety too. I think yeah. it's, it's really awesome, yeah. Well, orders at a Burger King restaurant in Nebraska had a message for upper management. We all quit. The you know, former employees left that message on the store oh sign. There it is. They say they quit their jobs because of long hours, lack of staffing, and poor working conditions. Former general manager at that restaurant saying that at one point the temperature in the kitchen reached into the 90s. Wow. They put it all, put it out there for put everyone it, to see. That's right. Yeah. Saying I can't do it anymore. Well, we want to hear from our morning mug club today. Today's a special day. Yes, it National is. National French Friday. It's also Whitney's birthday. But we want to know where your favorite fries are from. Let us know. We'll read some of those answers in a bit.
Well, good Tuesday morning. I'm Elliot Grandia. And I'm Nora Rogers. Let's take a look at some of your top stories right now. This morning, police now investigating a deadly shooting at a Rockford pharmacy. This happened around 8.30 last night outside the Walgreens on 11th Street. Police say one man was shot, taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries, and he did die a short time later. We're told the coroner's office will release more details soon. Of course, we'll bring you those as they come in. This also marked his second deadly shooting in just 24 hours. Uh, we told you about another one. 1.30 Monday morning, a 29-year-old man was found on a sidewalk. He did die later at the hospital. Still no word yet, though, on any suspect information. All right, Joey, we're looking for more sun today. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get that as we get into the afternoon. Still a little foggy out there as we take a live look over downtown Rockford. Still a couple of showers uh, uh, popping up on our radar this morning, but not as heavy as what we were dealing with last night. Uh, you can see that much of the region staying dry. In fact, there's a few breaks in the clouds off towards the west. Uh, still got to deal with some patchy fog if you are heading out towards mid morning. Still down to 0.5 in DeKalb, 2.5 in Rochelle, 3 in Freeport, and 3 out in Galena. It's Temperature wise, we're getting closer to that 70 degree mark in most spots, but we're going to see temperatures today a little warmer with that uh, additional sunshine this afternoon. We'll get into the low 80s, gradual clearing, and then we'll stay pretty dry overnight tonight. We'll have mostly clear skies. We'll have a few clouds from time to time, a little muggy as we get into tomorrow morning with temperatures in the mid 60s. Now, tomorrow, we're going to see uh, sunshine to start, but then we'll have thunderstorm chances increase thanks to our next storm system throughout the afternoon and evening. Thunderstorm chances for Thursday as well, but you can see as we get into the weekend, we're looking at a uh, quiet pattern moving in and some more sunshine. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, Joe. We've got a lot more to get to right here on Fox 39. Michelle joining us in just a few minutes with your entertainment news.
Right now at 7.30, new information on the assassination of Haiti's president, the way the DEA had a connection to it. And a popular camp here in the state line for boys uh, shutting down this morning over money, the way some scouts are now fighting to keep it afloat. Later, a beloved part of Rockford sports history coming to life all thanks to a streaming service, a local museum, hoping the series will inspire people to really come check out the state line. Live from Fox 39 and your home team, Eyewitness News in the Morning starts now. Well, this morning, a driver in England oh dubbed boy. the UK's worst parker. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> A driver, they were caught on camera <laughs> trying to back into the spot at an apartment. They took more than eight minutes to get in. <laughs> I'd like to see the U.S. one. Okay, here's the thing, though. There's we've, a space we've next all, to them open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's definitely being extra cautious here. We've all been there, though. You know, you park in Chicago. It takes you a little bit on that one but parallel spot. That. You've been looking for spots for yeah. 45 minutes. But this uh, right this here is not a bad, tight though. squeeze. I just, people I were standing by watching. I don't their understand meeting. why he didn't just go the other way. He's trying to back in and there's cars that aren't backed in. Why didn't he just pull in straight Apparently, up? Apparently he tried four different spots. He couldn't get in and now that he's in he won't uh, take his car Gosh. out. So, so you know what? <laughs> uh, we got to find the one in America here because I'm sure it's uh, worse. We, and we got yeah. parallel parking. Yeah. I mean there's been times I come out because we're here so early that I think I'm like in the lines at two in the morning and, oh, then, oh, yeah. and then I come out we at 10, 30 and I'm like oh oh boy yeah. <laughs> I'm taking up a couple spots here. So you know what we've all been there. Sorry fella. <laughs> It's not a good one. <laughs> All right. Let's go now to meteorologist Joey Marino. Joey, how's your parking? I mean, not too bad. Yeah, better I than mean, that. I, I always enjoy <laughs> parallel parking if I ever get the chance to do, do it. I do, too. Yeah. I pride myself in being oh, a I very good parallel parking. I know there's people Gina, that are fans of parallel parking. I'll, I will Big say fan. Gina gets closer to the curb than me. I don't okay. know how she does it. So the tires are literally She's like, a better, better yes. parallel than park. Well, that's nice of the you. One thing I do, uh, the one thing that I do that I make mistakes with is I go the wrong way in certain parking spots. You know how they have certain arrows pointing? Oh, yeah. Uh, which way you can go into the parking lot? Yeah. <laughs> Nora. Oh, oh. <laughs> just, do I know? <laughs> Always disregard that. When yeah. I, yeah. All right, Joey. Well, we might want the windshield wipers on this morning a little yeah. bit. It seemed a little rainy on our way in today. Yeah, we have a couple of showers, and you may want to take your time because we do have dense fog out there this morning. As you take a live look over in Poplar Grove, you can see that we do have some dense fog still sticking around the area. The thickest fog right now, uh, right down towards Interstate 88. So if you're traveling southbound and then you're going on Interstate 88 this morning, uh, just make sure to Take it slow, give yourself a couple of extra minutes, but then also uh, have those low beams on. You can see that down by DeKalb, they're at 0.5 uh, mile visibility, 2.5 in Rochelle, 3 in Freeport, and 3 in Galena. Temperatures now getting into the upper 60s and even in, at the 70 degree mark in uh, Galena, 66 in DeKalb, 66 also in Monroe, 64 in Freeport. Now, we did have a couple of showers overnight last night, uh, allowing the Rockford Airport to get about 0.8 inches of rainfall since midnight, uh, but those are now moving out of the area. Still got a couple of sprinkles, but we should dry out by the afternoon. We're going to keep a chance for a passing shower or two, but otherwise, mix of clouds and sunshine. We're going to see gradual clearing for Food Truck Tuesday. Temperatures dropping into the 70s by the end of the event. Let's take a look at our first Warren Interactive Radar, sponsored by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Uh, we got showers moving out this morning, also the dense fog uh, letting up as well. We'll have more details on that, plus the severe threat for tomorrow. Coming up, back to you. All right, thank you, Joey. Well, breaking news this morning a spokesperson for the DEA now says one of its former informants is one of the suspects in the assassination of Haiti's president. According to the New York Times, a man was heard yelling, this is a DEA operation as gunmen stormed the president's home. The DEA and the U.S. State Department have both given information to the Haitian government, which helped lead to that arrest. Also today, a scary new report from the United Nations saying hunger taking a devastating toll during last year's pandemic. One-fifth of the population in Africa is said to be undernourished. and In fact, hunger outpacing population growth there. Associated Press reporting global food insecurity growing as much last year as in the previous five years combined. Even though global food production, though, has quadrupled since the 1960s, getting food to everyone still a challenge today. Well, this morning, there's still a new warning about the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. The FDA says it may pose a small but possible risk of the Guillain-Barre syndrome. The rare immune syndrome disorder can cause muscle weakness and, in some cases, paralysis. The CDC says 100 people have developed that syndrome after receiving the vaccine, most of them over the age of 50. 
Health officials really stressing that the cases represent just a small fraction of the nearly 13 million Americans who have received the shot. Well, the CDC now says vaccinated students and staff do not have to wear a mask. But what does that mean for students under the age of 12 who can't get the vaccine or students who just don't want the vaccine? CDC recommends anyone over the age of two who does not have a shot to wear a mask inside. State Board of Education now looking into all of this, but a House Republican, Dan Calkins, sending a letter to the, uh, the governor urging the state not to mandate masks in class. Don't force these kids in schools to wear a mask. They've been together all summer. They've been playing sports together. They've been hanging out at birthday parties. You know, they've been socializing. They've been going to people's backyards, you know, playing ball. And now they're going to have to turn around in that same group and wear a mask. CDC, uh, the new guidance rather says if school administrators decide to remove any of those prevention strategies, uh, then they should remove them one at a time, kind of monitor them closely. An Illinois Boy Scout camp is on the chopping block this yeah, morning. The leadership group says they need money and believe shuttering the camp is the way to do it. Michelle Rave talking with a longtime camper, hoping to really save the camp. It's a short term, easy solution, but long term, crippling event. Uh, it, the, the camp has been around since 1936. Kevin Lamb is a former staff member and Boy Scout at Canyon Camp in Stockton. He calls the idea to sell the camp devastating. I still go look back to the most, the most meaningful thing that I ever did was not just teach somebody to swim, to get people over their fear of, of water. It just happens there. Uh, singing songs and skits and but it's, it's, a, it's a big learning experience. I was, I was captivated immediately. Dr. Christopher Tumalevich is the president of the Black Hawk Area Council, Boy Scouts of America. While he says this wasn't an easy decision to make, they need to find the funds to settle the previous sexual abuse allegations. It was a difficult decision, but because the, the Canyon Camp came in at a higher number, that's why that uh, consideration was floated. So the Black Hawk Executive Council and the executive committee and the board have to decide how are we going to come up with our fair share. Lamb believes there's other alternatives to selling. There are there are lots of other options. They have other assets. They have other monies. They, at a last resort, they could mortgage the camp rather than rather than sell the camp. But Timolovich says their hands are tied. We do not want to close a camp. We don't want to sell any of our buildings if we don't have to. It's not about having one of our camps survive. It's about having Black Hawk Area Council and the Boy Scouts of America survive. Reporting for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. Well, switching gears here, tennis star Naomi Osaka, now a Barbie doll. Mattel has released a Naomi Osaka Barbie doll. It's already sold out. That's despite a two doll per person limit and a $30 price tag. That doll is all part of the Barbie Role Models doll line, uh, featuring inspiring women around the globe. This isn't the first time Naomi Osaka's image has been used for a Barbie doll, though. Back in 2019, the four-time Grand Slam champ was one of 20 women receiving unique dolls created in their own likeness. And I know she's getting ready right now for the Tokyo Olympics. That's pretty exciting yeah, for her, Yeah, very too. cool. Well, time now is uh, 7.37, part of Rockford's sports history. Coming to life, it's all thanks to a <laughs> excuse me, a streaming service. We got some fog this morning, but thankfully we'll see this cloud cover give way to some sunshine as we get towards Food Truck Tuesday. More details coming up in the forecast. Stay tuned. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team, with Whitney Martin, Elliot Grandia, and meteorologist Joey Molino.
Now, your first one weather forecast with meteorologist Joey Marino. Good morning, everybody. We're still dealing with some patchy, dense fog across the area. As we take a live look over by uh, the Poplar Grove Airport, you can see the cloud cover, see the fog out there. And not only are we dealing with fog in Poplar Grove, uh, but also we're dealing with it along Highway 20 and then also for our spots along Interstate 88. You can see right now DeKalb sitting at 1.3 mile visibility, three in Rochelle, four in Freeport, and three out in Galena. So as you're heading out this morning onto the roadways, especially into mid-morning and possibly into the late morning hours. We're still going to be dealing with some fog, so you definitely want to take it slow. Use extra caution and then just make sure to travel with your low beams on if you are traveling through any dense fog. Temperature wise, we're starting to see these temperatures slowly climb as we get towards mid morning. You can see 65 in Freeport, 68 in Rockford, 67 in Monroe and 70 out in Galena. Now we've had a low pressure system bring us rain chances over the past couple of days. We had some showers move in overnight last night. And that did bring uh, hefty amounts of rainfall to portions of Rockford down towards Rochelle. In fact, just from midnight up until now, that Rockford Airport has observed about 0.8 inches of rainfall, and that was in a four-hour span. So we're still seeing a couple of showers there, uh, but most of the action now pushing to our east, leaving us with some cloud cover, some patchy, dense fog. This low-pressure system is going to be making its way out of the area, so that's going to allow our next system to take its place, and that moves in tomorrow. But as we get into today, Today we're going to see sunshine as we get into the afternoon, decreasing clouds, temperatures in the low 80s. It'll feel a little muggy throughout the day today, uh, but with winds changing to the southwest, that's going to boost our temperatures and humidity for Wednesday. We have a chance for afternoon and evening thunderstorms. Then with the cold front Thursday, that threat continues into the second half of the work week. Now let's take a look at future cast. I think this model is overdue in the precipitation for uh, this afternoon, but still a shower or two is possible. We'll see gradual clearing, allowing for some sunshine. Uh, late in the day, we'll stay pretty quiet tonight under mostly clear skies. Uh, a few passing clouds from time to time. Temperatures in the 60s by tomorrow morning. Uh, you can see, though, that cloud cover is going to be increasing once we get into the mid to late morning hours tomorrow. And that's going to lead to a chance for thunderstorms, some of which could be strong to severe. Now, the Storm Prediction Center overnight put an enhanced risk for severe weather for portions of Iowa up into southeast Minnesota and then for much of central Wisconsin. But with them upgrading the severe risk for tomorrow. You can see they have expanded that slight risk to include our northwest area. So this portion of the state line does have the threat for damaging winds, heavy rainfall, and an isolated tornado or two is possible. But for the rest of the state line, we're looking at heavy winds and damaging wind gusts. Now that's going to be mainly for the afternoon and evening. So as I say, with every severe threat, just make sure you have multiple ways to get watches and warnings. Then as we get into Thursday, we're going to see that threat for severe weather shift to the south east mainly across uh, the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes with the cold front. Uh, but once we get into the weekend, we're going to start to see thunderstorm chances go down and then we're going to start to see our temperatures go down as well. So we have a threat for thunderstorms tomorrow and Thursday. Then you can see we quiet down as we head into the upcoming weekend. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Joey. Well, the streets of a Pittsburgh neighborhood have been thrown back to the time in the 1940s. Yeah, it's part of a new TV series with plenty of Rockford connections. Dylan Srocki says a league of their own could really mean a boost for local tourism. This is going to continue to bring that story um, and, and place Rockford at the heart of it. With filming now underway for Amazon Prime's upcoming A League of Their Own TV series, the Rockford Peaches are set to be thrust into the national spotlight once again. I've been saying this to anybody who would listen, and Rockford needs to be ready because when this comes out, we need to jump. Renewed interest in the Peaches could provide a boost to some local organizations like the International Women's Baseball Center. For the past two years, they've been working on bringing a women's baseball museum and activity center to the area around Byers Stadium. What's exciting for me is that we're already doing all this stuff. And then now this is going to come in and I think it's going to give an extra charge. IWBC President Kat Williams says the project has been gaining steam in recent months. We told you back in January about a fundraiser started by former ball player Maybelle Blair. We got a lot of uh, publicity and we got uh, a lot of donations as a result of that. Williams served as an advisor on the new show and believes it will keep the ball rolling in the right direction. I think this TV show will do something similar. 
Tourism leaders say the series could even draw out-of-towners to the Forest City to visit Byer Stadium or see the Peaches exhibit at Midway Village Museum. There's a lot of wonderful things here in our community and places where it tells the story of the peaches. So I'm sure once you watch the series, you're going to be really interested in learning more about the history of the Rockford Peaches. Well, there has not yet been a premiere date announced for the show, but we'll let you know when that does come out. Well, time now is 7.45. Next at 8, another scam to look out for this morning. A message coming from a state line sheriff's department hoping to protect your money. And a celebration for the win has left the Stanley Cup damaged. The reason that cup now finding itself on the IR this morning. Friday. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hello. So who's working Friday? Oh, Candace. Candace. She just picks up a couple or this one or what? Well, baseball's Midsummer Classic on deck tonight. Scott Lover has that story more in today's sports headlines. Major League Baseball officials were hoping to cut down on the number of home runs this season, but not last night. The more the merrier for the All-Star Home Run Derby. There were eight contestants, and Shoy Otani of the Angels was one of the favorites, but he was eliminated in the first round by Juan Soto of the Nationals. The star of this show was the same guy who starred in 2019, the Mets' Pete Alonso. He set a first-round record by belting 35 home runs. He went on to win the Derby by defeating Baltimore's Trey Mancini in the finals. Alonzo earned $1 million for his championship. That's more than his entire salary this season. We'll see Shohei Otani early and often in the All-Star game tonight. The Angels' star will be the American League starting pitcher. He'll also bat leadoff for the American League. The National League starting pitcher will be Max Scherzer of the Nationals. Chris Bryant will be one of the reserves for the National League. It'll be his fourth All-Star game and quite possibly his last in a Cubs uniform. That thought has gone through his mind. I've thought about it just because of the rumors that are out there. Um, but yeah, certainly whenever my time is done playing for the Cubs, when I'm done playing this game, I can look back on however long I've spent in this uniform and be very proud of it. You can see the All-Star game on Fox 39. The coverage tonight begins at 6.30. Duncan Keith will be wearing an Oilers sweater next hockey season. The Blackhawks have traded him to Edmonton for young defenseman Caleb Jones and a conditional third-round draft pick. Keith had requested a trade so he could be closer to his son in British Columbia. Keith ranks second all-time in games played for the Blackhawks. Rockford Lutheran has a new head football coach. He is Ron Gates. Gates is the president and owner of the Rockford Renegades youth football program at Lutheran. He's also been an assistant coach at several local high schools, including Jefferson, Auburn, and Christian Life. That's sports. Have a great day.
Well, this morning, the Stanley Cup being put on the injured reserve list after it was dented during celebrations in Tampa. This, this picture on the cup showing visible damage is now circulating online. It was apparently dented yesterday in a boat parade in Tampa as Lightning was celebrating their recent championship. The cup will now be sent to Montreal for repairs. It's expected to return to Tampa this weekend, so there will be more celebrations. So. I want to know how many times it's been injured. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because I was watching so many different videos, and I didn't realize, yeah, this is such You're a like, huge... <laughs> I was like, they're having a good doing? time there. <laughs> All right, Michelle, yeah. of course, with us uh, this morning with everything in the entertainment world. Yes. Uh, we may not be having quite as much fun as them, but we always have fun with you, Michelle. <laughs> as much fun <laughs> as the Stanley yeah. Cup people? Yeah. Probably not. Close. Maybe someday. <laughs> Our kicking things off this morning with a video that Eva Mendez posted on Instagram. So it's not really trending because of the video. I mean, it's cute. It's her, yeah. like, modeling. Um, but it's actually trending. You can see it right there. Because she said in the caption, my kids shot this. So why is that such a big deal? She never talks about yeah. her kids ever. Eva Mendez and Ryan Gosling are famously so private about their kids. Even the slightest mention like this uh, is noteworthy. We were just talking about right here. Ellie didn't know they were together, nor no, thought they yes. were married. They're they are not married. Yes, but right. they have been together for quite some time. Esmeralda and Amada are actually only All five and six names. years old so anyway, funny. so it is impressive that yeah. a five and six year old yeah. put this together. Do you know how um, long they've been together? Probably around like six or seven years. Yeah. Not, and they weren't like romantically linked for that long okay. prior to like finding out that they were Power having Power couple though. Yeah, Seriously, but they don't live yeah. like that. Yeah. No, I like you how You never hear about it. Yeah, you sort of feel a little yeah. less power, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not using <laughs> it. That's right. I don't know. Maybe see someday we we'll see yeah. all four of them together. Maybe not. Also trending this morning, Millie Bobby Brown has a new boyfriend. Okay. Um, why is it such a big deal? Because of his dad. So the boyfriend's name is Jake. Bon Jovi, which makes you think, is he related to Bon Jovi? And then you remember, yeah, John Bon Jovi's real last name is Bon Jovi. Oh. With a G, oh, not I... a J. Okay. These two uh, seemingly have been an item since June when Jake posted this photo on his Instagram grid, captioning this BFF with a heart, but since then they've been popping up in each other's stories. So I have another photo from his Instagram I want to show you just because this one is where you're like, okay, that's John Bon Jovi's wow. kid. That's crazy. Yes, I think this is so it's funny too. I was, grew up. I was thinking about how my uh, my Nora. niece loves <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown, yeah. and and her mother loves Bon Jovi. So I'm sure there's a lot of families out there who are talking about this today. They're like, oh yeah, do you know who his dad? Yeah, that's funny. It is crazy. Yeah, that's finally funny. this morning, Jamie Lynn Spears' upcoming memoir has a new name. So this is a book that was supposed to come out next January and still will, January 18th, but it was originally titled A Southern Roots. And then all of a sudden, it's got a new name, borrowing a line from Britney's biggest hit. It's going to be called oh. I Must Confess, Family, must Fame, confess. and Figuring It <laughs> okay, Out. Okay, so is that okay that she's kind of taking her sister's I'm song sure title? I'm sure they talked about it. Well, hasn't I, there been drama between the two of them? No, so, not okay. internal, okay. only external from people thinking gotcha, there's drama. Gotcha. We haven't ever heard of any actual like internal okay. drama. It's only going to be $13.99, so maybe you want to pre-order it whenever it's available. Nice. The weird thing is the title just changed. And everyone's talking about how it got updated on the list from the publisher. Yeah. I still Where just remember her from Zoe 101. Uh, obviously, that's like 20 years ago. Good question. She looks the same. Yeah. All right. She's got a lot well, to say. It is also <laughs> National French Friday. Let us know your favorite spot to get fries. We'll talk about that in just a little bit.
All right, good morning. I'm Elliot Grandia. And I'm Nora Rogers. Let's take a look at some of your top stories. There's a new warning this morning about the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. The FDA says it may pose a small but possible risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome. The rare immune system disorder can cause muscle weakness and in some cases paralysis. The CDC says 100 people have developed this syndrome after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Most were men over the age of 50. Health officials, though, now stressing that the cases represent just a small fraction of the nearly 13 million Americans who have received the shot. Also this morning, the CDC now says vaccinated students and staff do not have to wear a mask. But what does that uh, mean for students under the age of 12 who can't get the vaccine or students that are 12 who will not get the vaccine? Well, the CDC now recommends anyone over the age of two who does not have the shot to wear a mask inside. So the State Board of Education, looking into all of this, a House Republican, Dan Calkins, sending a letter to the governor now urging the state not to mandate masks in class. Joey? And taking a look outside, still dealing with some patchy fog as we get closer towards mid-morning. Temperatures are starting to get closer to that 70 degree mark. 70 up in Janesville, 66 in Rochelle, 68 in Sterling, 65 in Freeport, and 69 degrees out in Galena. You can see winds are starting to turn more to the northwest and even to the west as that low pressure system tracks to the east of the region. And so we're going to see warmer temperatures by this afternoon thanks to uh, more sunshine moving in. So we're going to see cloud cover this morning. Morning, give way to gradual clearing during the afternoon. An isolated shower or two is possible, but we're going to stay mainly dry into tonight. So if you're heading out to uh, Food Truck Tuesday, looking pretty good there. But then once we get into tonight, we're going to see a few passing clouds from time to time. Temperatures in the 60s by tomorrow morning, and then we'll start to see the thunderstorm chance increase by the afternoon. Back to you guys. All right, we're talking French fries. We've been talking about them all morning. We also have a birthday to celebrate here in the studio. Join us next.